four, three, two, one. Good evening and welcome to another edition of Meet the Leader. Tonight I have a very special person from one of the best immigrant organizations probably in the nation, Immigrant Coalition for Immigrant and Refugees Rights. My guest tonight is Brianna Rodriguez. She is director of New American Initiative Program, which helps uh, Chicago and uh, uh, vicinity uh, legal permanent residents become citizens of the United States. The program, uh, you know, has been uh, in existence for quite a while now. Uh, can you tell us more how it began and uh, how many citizens have we made uh, thanks to that program? Sure. So um, the, the New Americans Initiative program has been around for, um, I think, going on 15 years now. Um, and it's grown from, you know, the city of Chicago to suburbs to also going downstate, um, which are, we find, you know, high areas of need. Um, I think thus far, I think we have reached over 10,000 applicants within the last, I believe, year. So every year it's, it's a growing, it's a growing program. And so we're, we're very happy with all the organizations that we work with um, and that really encapsulate how diverse the immigrant population is. It's not, um, you know, any one ethnicity's problem. It's, it's a very holistic approach. The program helps really everybody, every community and ethnic group in Chicago area. How many languages uh, do our volunteers speak and uh, how many ethnic groups do we have together to, to help those, you know, who would like to apply for citizenship? So we have a variety, a variety of languages. Um, I think the last report that we did, we had over 17 languages, um, all ranging from all across the world. Um, we have seen a, uh, a, an increase um, in population in um, Arab Americans and also in Asian Americans, um, kind of going through our programs and going through our citizenship programs. But I know that with our, um, our ESL classes, um, you know, our teachers tell us that they have, you know, just the United Nations there in their <laughs> office with them. Chicago is a great city, you know, and really tries to be. Uh, right now, you know, the new mayor, the mayor Emmanuel, like a previous one also, they really talked uh, a lot about, you know, sort of uh, making sure that immigrants can use uh, the, you know, variety of programs and some of them were just designed really to help us to feel and adjust in the new country. Uh, how many programs altogether Illinois Coalition has for uh, different uh, services? Well, we have the New American Initiative, which covers um, outreach, so just getting information out to people, legal processing, um, where we have uh, BIA accredited organizations as well as individuals who um, look at cases and, and see how um, their eligibility and, and anything else that they may need to do. We also have ESL and citizenship classes that's kind of encapsulated in the New Americans Initiative program. Uh, we also have IFRP, which is our Immigrant Family Resource Program, um, which covers um, public aid, all different types of public aid. Um, and then we also have WIC, um, which is the Women's and Infants Program, um, which uh, is for which is, is actually a very nice program because there is no um, immigration status. You don't need an immigration status for that program and it's really geared towards um, pregnant women and um, women who have children under five. All those services are provided by the variety of ethnic organizations, mm -hmm. uh, so-called membership organizations. Yes. yes. And uh, you know, you just said it, that uh, just last year we had over 10,000 people who applied for citizenship and uh, some of them are still in process. Mm -hmm. But over the years, I believe that we already passed the 100,000 yes. number of legal permanent residents uh, who became citizens. This is a, a great number and also very important for uh, representatives and our uh, politics. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, this is a 100,000 people who are going to be voting and Today, especially, we think about those things. Yeah. Uh, we usually, uh, the organization makes sure that uh, every workshop and later every old ceremony also makes sure that uh, those people who just became citizens, they 
uh, also register right away. Yes. I know that you know the organization also sends people to the oath ceremonies and mm -hmm. uh, make sure that they register to vote yes. and they know how to vote. Right now, you know, this year, it's uh, especially last two months, uh, it become, became very difficult for every ethnic organization, especially with the budget crisis we have mm -hmm. in the state of Illinois. Uh, what did the organization do and how do you think we all will try to make sure that uh, everyone, our representatives, senators, and of course, governor, understands how important those programs are for the community. Sure. So the nice thing about our organization is that we are a member organization. So we have over 130 uh, member organizations throughout the state who, you know, come from all across the world, um, not only um, regular immigrant um, and community-based organizations, but we also have um, refugee resettlement organizations as well who play a huge part um, in the work that we do. Um, in terms of the, the budget crisis, um, you know, I, I think this is a point where we really need to band together. Um, you know, we've been working with organizations to get meetings with legislators um, to really kind of push the importance of the work that we do. Um, you know, we, especially with our um, immigrant family resource program, we work very closely with the, um, the state offices to um, ensure that, you know, our clients are getting uh, the language support that they need um, and they're getting a very you know a positive approach when they go to these state offices so um, you know we fear that without our programs um, it's going to be very hard for the state alone to meet that to meet those requirements to meet state uh, I, I believe mandated um, language requirements so that's very important you know probably at least half of our audience who is watching right now you know at some point uh, came to Polish American Association and uh, um, you know just got the services you are talking about. You know the program of uh, the immigrant family uh, service resource program, resource program uh, that's one of the, our really most sought after program we also have at Polish American Association. Uh, those people who come to us really would be absolutely unable to uh, enroll and later use that program if they went to the uh, you know the state uh, agencies mm -hmm. uh, mainly because you know the language barrier of the language barrier uh, what's the way and you know what can we do all do you know especially our audience you know to help us uh, to uh, still continue with that program and to provide services we do and so many people really uh, use us well, I think that especially with the um, the state offices where you can go to, <clears throat> excuse me, to get um, you know a public aid benefits, um, it's very important to you know ask for services in your languages. Um, if you're you know educated and want to work in those places too, you know um, I know that they're probably going to be looking for um, bilingual speakers. Um, because we really need to push those things. Um, when it comes to our organizations, I, I think that it's very important for, um, for them to continue their work, um, regardless if you know, our programs go away or not. Um, and that being said, you know, there's also always has to be talks of alternative forms of funding, um, but really being pushing the need of the community and making sure that, um, you know, that you reach out to everyone and anyone who you think might qualify for these, because all these programs are so interrelated. I mean, going from a citizenship program, you know, to a uh, public aid program, they're, they're all very, you know, interrelated. So um, it's kind of hard to have one without the other. The, the term, for example, public aid program uh, is sort of, uh, it's not very easily understand, mm -hmm. uh, understood by, by our community members. Uh, mainly because that's the name, you know, for, for years uh, everyone thought that, you know, those people really are unable to care for themselves. But really that program talks about every really issue in their life it's because, you know, they can help, they can enroll in the uh, Medicaid, of course, but they can also, it's a SNAP program, which is, you know, for those who at the moment, you know, need some help with uh, some extra 
uh, money for food, so-called, you know, the food, uh, food stamps used mm -hmm. to uh, be called, and right now the program is called SNAP. But, you know, really every part of life, uh, those uh, counselors help them with, because mm -hmm. so if someone, let's say, uh, just re recently uh, was in a hospital and, you know, there was not enough coverage, they also help to find the resources and uh, the social workers at the hospitals and the institutions, those uh, people really either uh, had to use or, you know, they, uh, you know, in nursing homes. So can you talk more about, you know, what kind of help our clients and people really get out of those programs you were just talking about? To, so the audience can understand how important it is. Sure. So I think the the biggest importance with our programs is um, is that everybody needs a, a plan B. Um, you know, things happen, things come up. Um, unfortunately, they can leave you in very bad situations. Um, I strongly believe that these programs are there are supplemental programs. You know, they're they're not um, what people think of. Um, you know, people living off of welfare and and um, you know consistently wanting wanting that. Nobody wants to be on these programs for forever, but they're there for assistance and they're assistance programs for people who need them. Um, you know, I know that there's always been kind of a, even, even in my culture, there's a little bit of a taboo uh, when it comes to, to reaching out for services. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, I, I, like I could t speak to our, our WIC program, um, which was one that was, uh, which I, I absolutely love that program because I, I really do think that um, women's health is very important, especially yes. when you're pregnant. And um, young children, because that yes. uh, program helps uh, really infants. Yes, yes. <laughs> um, you know, and so we had, you know, um, ICER along with uh, the state had created these um, recipe books um, for all different types of um, Ethnicity is for them to try to see how they can make uh, their own traditional foods using the, you know, those recipe books, um, and that was probably one of my favorite things that we did. Um, but you know, it, it's moments like that when when you could use additional additional support, and you know, you, you never know what can happen, and so it's always nice to be able to have um, a little bit of a fallback to help you kind of get back on your feet when you need it most. Also, the organization uh, advocates and behave of immigrant communities mm -hmm. and this is a very serious uh, part of your work mm -hmm. you also are great with uh, getting uh, interns who <laughs> yes. you know whenever we call you know there's always someone who can uh, you know refer uh, people to appropriate offices or agencies in the state and also inform about what's going on with uh, you know changes in immigration policies uh, recently we've had you know, last November and November 20th, President announced the new programs. But as we as we all know by now, you know, right now we have sort of like bumps on the road. Yes. Uh, but uh, you also provide information about uh, whatever goes on with those policies and with procedures. But right now the campaign still goes on and we talk about the preparation, helping people to get ready. Can you talk about more about you know the new programs and what should we do and how should we prepare ourselves when it finally is going to be implemented? Yes, sure. So um, the programs that you're referring to are DACA and DAPA um, for uh, undocumented um, individuals. So um, as you had mentioned, um, there has been a little bit of a a strain on that with the uh, Texas judge, um, but of course we're not continuing. We're not going to stop our fight. Um, we were told that that's just going to be a temporary setback, um, and for our people to continue to prepare. So that being said, it could be anything from um, you know gathering all your information, translating any documents that you have. Um, you know, our organizations are uh, part of our larger program of Illinois is Ready. Um, so we have um, a website, IllinoisReady.org, um, where you can get more information, but also we have partnered with all of our organizations um, and we have trained our organizations on um, everything to look for, um, what they're going to need, how they can best inform the community, 
Um, you know, right now we're, we're looking at different ways with social media, with texting, um, you know, really getting the information out there. Um, and so our, I think our best avenue for, um, for information will be our community organizations. Um, they're the closest on the ground to our community. Um, and, you know, we just want to make sure that nobody is getting taken advantage of, that nobody is getting, you know, becoming victims of fraud um, and or paying lots and lots of money for something that they don't need to pay for. So um, those are all very important. So we always, you know, try to um, send people to our organizations. And if we need to send them to a lawyer, we have um, a list of uh, lawyers that we, we consider trustworthy and that won't take advantage of, of our clients. Also, a part of uh, the information, there are organizations, uh, mainly most of them are BIA accredited, mm -hmm. but uh, also they are legal, uh, you know, the organizations. Uh, usually they have several lawyers on staff mm -hmm. and they help people, you know, to in situations they need really advice from uh, attorneys to develop uh, some kind of procedure and a way they can deal with their issues and cases. But also, uh, you know, you are famous for really dealing with uh, quite a few organizations and agencies and the city and state departments. You advocate on our behalf with really with uh, entire city and the state and also <laughs> on the national level. Yes. Uh, can you talk about more, a bit more about that, you know, what kind of organizations and what, uh, in what way uh, we can also participate and maybe help uh, to spread the news about what you do. So first and foremost, um, you know, especially for anybody who's watching this, um, I would definitely say to reach out to a local organization. Like I said, we have 100... Polish American <laughs> Association. <laughs> Um, we have 130 plus member organizations and all are very well, very good. Um, we, we do plan on doing lobby days, um, and especially now with the, the, um, the proposals from the governor, we're planning on going, having big lobby days every month um, for the next probably four or five months um, to really push um, how important this is for us. and. Uh, when we talk about big turnout, you know, the, the more people that they can see that this affects, uh, the more of a response we feel that we'll get from them. So, um, you know, ICER kind of coordinates that. Um, we're, like I said, I mean, all of, all of our work is, is kudos to all of our organizations. Uh, we kind of just tell you where to go and then mm -hmm. you make all the loud noise um, because we're so small in numbers compared to everybody else and, um, you know, and with our organizations, they see the diversity, they see how, how much of an impact our, our organizations have. And so, um, you know, it's, it's really important to see if we could get more people down to those things like uh, lobby days, um, meeting with representatives and legislators and really sharing stories. Um, we, we've kind of encapsulated the fact that our stories are what moves people. So we're always looking for, um, for great stories of how our programs have helped people, you know, um, live their, their idea of the American dream. But also a part of, you know, the problems of those people, you know, of our community members, you, you also spread the news and, you know, you are advocating on their behalf. Um, ICER also uh, participates in national conferences. Mm -hmm. uh, just recently you were part of uh, really two of them, yes? Yes. And, uh, you know, could you tell us, you know, how that works for, you know, for the ethnic communities and uh, whether, you know, someone, let's say, wants to participate in something like that, how can they approach you or should they approach us, you know, to uh, be a part of, uh, you know, those conferences or uh, special uh, conference calls and things like that, because I believe that, as you said it, the personal story really sells yes. the topic. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So um, in December, I actually went to Los Angeles, which was very nice being in California in December. Um, but that was um, in, in partnership with uh, Trilla, who's, our, mm -hmm. uh, who's basically our uh, sister organization in California. Um, and through these conferences, I believe that it's a great learning opportunity for us. Um, we get to see nationwide what other organizations are doing. 
um, we get to see how other organizations move, you know, the politics within their own um, state or cities, as well as, um, you know, technology that they might be using. Um, I know that, you know, there's uh, an app for, for, for DACA, which I didn't know about until I went to this. Um, so it's, it's really kind of collaborating and, and sharing best practices, which um, is, is very important when it comes to this type of work, um, mostly for, for getting out the, the information to our clients, um, but also finding different ways that we can um, work together to really um, continue the push for, for, for immigra immigration reform nationwide. I believe that this is uh, really very important because also, you know, every state is a bit different, different mm -hmm. demographics, different uh, budget problems. So, uh, you know, of course, uh, mainly we're talking about the states with the large numbers of immigrants from all around the world really, right now. Uh, you know, have, did you see the differences between the states when you were there? You know, do we have the same issues which are really important or, you know, is there a variety of issues uh, uh, in regard to the states? Yeah, well, we're fortunate enough to be in Illinois, which is considered a very immigrant-friendly state. Um, you know, when, when speaking with um, people who were from states that were not so immigrant-friendly, you could see the struggle a little bit more. Um, they were trying to do things that we've already done. Um, which is a lot harder to, to push in those areas. Um, like driver's licenses, yes. for example. This is a fantastic, you know, really uh, one way we, we got here. Yes. And, you know, th that issue is really a part right now of the problem with uh, the Texas uh, uh, ruling, recent uh, mm -hmm. ruling on uh, DACA and DAPA. Yeah. Because the, the state of Texas, uh, the, the judge said that because uh, you know those people would be eligible to uh, apply for driver's licenses is going to have a cost extra cost for the state yes. so you know these are really you know in the state of illinois we already uh, passed that special uh, you know the driver's license for temporary driver's license for everybody which is i think it's a very important issue because we all want to have drivers who are not only good drivers, but they have uh, insurances and they, you know, th that everybody can really move around the state and don't have to drive without them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was definitely a, more of a public safety issue. We want to make sure that everybody's safe. So what do you think about the Texas? How come they don't want, you know, they want to have people without driver's licenses driving their stay in their state? Yeah, I mean, I... I don't even know. I, I probably can't talk too badly about Texas because my fiance is from Texas. But um, <laughs> it's a beautiful state. It's and, warm. And, it's yes. very warm there right now. Um, you know, I I don't know. I I think that I've been trying to understand why why it's been so hard to push certain um, certain legislation there that we've had here um, that's been successful here, and how how it's so hard to move it in some other places. Um, you know, I've heard a lot of it's, it's kind of like a, a game for politicians, which is unfortunate when it affects so many people's lives, um, you know, and I just hope that, that they can get over that <laughs> for the sake of, of all, the, all of the people who, um, who could be affected by those things. I mean, you know, driver's license was such a public safety thing. Like you said, you know, we, need, we want safe drivers. Um, we also want insured drivers. And we got that, and so you know, there's always there's a little bit of a, a sigh of relief when you're driving and don't have to worry about Absolutely. somebody just hitting you. So, um, so yeah. Uh, you know, let's talk about you know in the last uh, few sentences. Maybe you can tell us what is the message. What would you like you know the sent? What kind of message would you like to send to our audience, to people, to uh, you know in Polish community? how they can help us and themselves, you know, to really push those issues forward, uh, mainly probably the budget and, uh, you know, the support for immigrant uh, services uh, line item, because that's, the, we used to have that, and in the new budget, we just simply don't. Yes. And also about, you know, DACA and DAPA. Yeah, so um, I think one of the most important, um, important aspects of all immigrant 
movements is that it's important to remember that Im immigrant, the immigrant issue is not one person's issue. It's everybody's issue. Um, you know, if, if it's not you, if it's not someone in your family, it's somebody that you know. Um, and, you know, people have all different types of statuses. People come here for all different types of reasons. And I think that it's very important to, to hold on to that and to remember that. Um, you know, the media portrays a very certain type of image, um, which is very false. Um, yes, there are people in those situations. Yes, people, um, you know, have that, those types of immigrant statuses, but that's not everybody and that's not everything. Um, you know, just like we have our, our, our name is uh, the Illinois Coalition for Immigrant and Refugee Rights. Um, and just like, you know, there's all different types of immigration statuses, being refugee is part, is part of that. Um, you know, so it, it goes to a lot broader of a, of a problem that I think that when it comes into um, our member organizations and our funding, you know, um, all the support that we can get would be great. Um, you know, really reaching out to organizations like Polish American Association. Um, we'll provide, you know, the numbers and yes. the names of the representatives and senators mm -hmm. and places and uh, special people who can help us to make our legislators understand that these programs are really great. They very, uh, you know, cheap compared to the uh, other big agencies who cannot provide, yes. you know, uh, bilingual, for example, case uh, uh, workers. So, uh, you know, we really, and you know, going to your website, yes, you can probably find it all. <laughs> yes, um, on our website uh, at icer.org or even our Facebook page, we have um, lots of information, upcoming events that we post on our Facebook page. Um, same with our Twitter. We have a Twitter handle, so <laughs> we can follow us on that as well. Um, and, and I think really informing yourself on, on not only who your legislators are, um, but what they stand for, and, and if that's in line with what you want um, for yourself and for your community, and making sure that you, you understand kind of who you're voting for and why. And probably our students, uh, Polish students, studying around Chicago, maybe that you would like to have them you know, as interns or volunteers helping you with your hard work. Of course, we always want, <laughs> we always want interns and volunteers, um, and, and we really like civic engagement and youth engagement, so um, we really like helping, you know, shape the minds of, of our future generations to come. Our guest uh, tonight was uh, Ms. Brianna Rodriguez, uh, Director of New American Initiative Program at uh, Illinois Coalition for Immigrants and Refugees Rights. Brianna, thank you very much. Thank and you I so hope much. That, you know, pretty soon we'll have more people who are going to help us and, and sure to advocate for immigrant communities. Thank you very much. Thank you so much pleasure. for thank the you. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you.